In this episode, we'll chronicle how we tackled the challenge of converting our backyard grass lawn into our personal National Geographic site and a food garden. We hope someday that it will resemble a food forest, eventually. We share this experience in the hope that you may learn something that you can apply to your own situation. We'll work our way backwards from what we have in the garden currently to what we had to work with from the beginning. Let's get into it! When we started, we had the following question we wanted to tackle. How can we transform our grass lawn into a lush garden? It's a daunting task! Here are some of the things we wanted for our garden. We wanted it to be a place with biodiversity and habitat friendly for native wildlife. A system that helps us use less water, vegetation that requires less or no chemicals, fertilizes herbicides and pesticides, and a system that helps us save energy, produce fewer greenhouse gases, and rely less on noise-polluting lawnmowers, leaf blowers, and edging machines. Our one-third acre property is in USDA Zone 9A. Several Gulf Coast states fall under that USDA hardiness zone. We developed a landscaping plan using the property survey drawings. We laid out where the fruit tree orchard would be and where the vegetable raised beds would be. We did a lot of research, modified the plan some more, and then implemented once the picture was clear and we were good with the plan. It's a work in progress, but we did it so you can do it too. We started with using cardboard as mulch to cover sections of the lawn and smother the grass in that area. Sheet mulching is a technique of laying cardboard or newspaper over an existing lawn and then topping it off with wood mulch. The layers break down naturally to feed the soil with microbes, creating a vibrant ecosystem which is going to make the soil nutrient-rich that make for healthy and vibrant plants. Sheet mulching is also an ideal way to suppress weeds. To replace lawns, the best time to sheet mulch is typically in the fall to take advantage of the rains, but it can be done anytime. We broke the yard covered with lawn into sections so as to not make the project too daunting. We did it all with lots and lots of manual labor of love. We worked early in the morning. We worked until the sun went down to get the layers of sheet mulching down. We worked out the symmetry of the planting areas that worked for us and outlined the areas of where the plants and trees are going to be, using flag markers, strings, and rocks to mark the borders. This way, we identified how wide the garden paths are going to be. We made sure to include pathways through the garden so we're not trampling all over the plants and veggies while watering, or even just admiring and inspecting the garden. We also included sitting areas throughout. The pathways we intentionally left to be wide to allow for two people to walk side by side. We left the pathways as grass, and we do not mow these grasses regularly. Here's how we converted the grass by sheet mulching. One outlined the desired garden area. Two, covered the area with cardboard, overlapping the pieces generously to prevent weeds from popping through. Three, added a layer of compost and a layer of mulch on top of that to ensure we smother the grass and keep everything looking tidy. Four, drenched the mulch and cardboard with water. If you cannot find any cardboard, approach businesses or consider dumpster diving if you feel safe doing it. Clean up the cardboard of any plastic, tape, and staples, and use the brown cardboard, not the shiny ones with lots of print on it. Cardboard layers, 3 inch layer of mulch. One of the other things we kept in mind for our garden was to select plants and trees that can survive the huge temperature variations from winter to summer on the U.S. Gulf Coast. 
We set out to choose plants and trees that are cold hardy to low temperatures ranging between 20 and 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Because remember, freezing conditions seem to occur in the US Gulf Coast with regular frequency. The winter of 2021 is an example of that. To attract birds, bees, and butterflies, we chose to plant mainly perennial ornamentals that are considered native to the area. And check out the description for the list of plants that we currently have growing in our garden. For reference, we used the list of trees and plants from the Native Plant Society of Texas Houston branch. We suggest doing some research to see if there are any publications for your region. As examples, we listed in the description below the Native Plant Societies of the US Gulf Coast region. From our research, replacing your lawn with plant types that have grown and survived in your region helps build healthy soil and create a place for birds, butterflies, and bees, and other wildlife you otherwise would not normally see with a grass lawn. And starting your own vegetable garden or backyard fruit orchard beyond a yard requires regular mowing and edging. Since the yard is dominated by a grass lawn, we had to find ways to smother the grass so we can increase the planting area. What allowed us to achieve this conversion of the grass lawn is sheet mulching. We worked in a non-particular sequence. There were times when we felt it best to put the trees or plants in the ground first and sheet mulch afterwards, and there were places in the yard where we laid down cardboard first, put hardwood mulch down on top, and let the section sit. Some things to remember when starting your garden. Decide what plants you'll be growing ahead of time to make the most out of your garden design. When buying plants, check to see whether what you're buying will last just a season or for years to come. For example, annuals live for a certain period of time, often just a season. See the link in the description below for examples. While perennials survive summer and winter to grow year after year. Cut down the work of having to replant every year by filling your garden with mostly perennials. Figure out your low temperature zone ahead of plant shopping to determine whether or not your choice of plants can withstand your region's environmental conditions. Before plant shopping, know your hardiness zone, for example ours is zone 9A. Garden sunlight levels, our yard gets plenty of sun, we have southern and western exposure, which are advantageous mostly but can be challenging in the intense hot summer, average regional rainfall, and yearly temperature lows and highs. It's been said that the best time to plant trees was seven years ago. We wanted the second best thing. We budgeted for it and went to get seven-year-old trees and planted them in the garden throughout. Our side yard that used to be bare with grass lawn is now a fruit tree orchard. We have a loquat tree, a Meyer lemon tree, calamondin, persimmon, blood morrow orange, three in one apple tree, and a cocktail tree with different stone type fruits grafted onto one rootstock. 
According to Master Gardeners, newly planted fruit trees require thorough watering two to three times the first week and one to two times per week for the next few weeks, depending upon soil type, rainfall, and time of year. Then, apply water when the soil begins to get dry an inch or so down. Spring 2022. We decided that we wanted more than just a lawn. We wanted a garden that will attract birds, bees, and butterflies. A habitat garden combined with a fruit tree orchard and a vegetable garden. Check out these before pictures of the yard where the lawn was a sea of grass. We're not hating the grass lawn, but it's not what we wanted anymore. This is what the yard looked like, all grass lawn. In later episodes, we'll share what we do for composting to build up soil. We'll also go over the raised beds that we chose to use and some best practices for planting trees. And don't forget, press like, subscribe, and the notification bell if you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching.